over the last few days, I've been sent this article from Babylon talking about the truth about carbon buildup and engines that have a direct injection system. Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. Sorry for any technical issues. I'm on the road. I want to record this because I got sent to me again last night. And what we're saying here in this article is we're talking about direct injection. We're talking about carbon buildup. And this comes from an interview I did a couple days ago with a Solantis chief engineer who does engine propulsion systems. And I didn't ask him directly, what are you doing about carbon buildup? How do you solve it? Because I've asked this for years. And now people are showing me this article going, hey, Tim, this article really points out what the issue is. And so they want my comments on it, want my feedback. So I said, okay, let, let's do this video. So we all know that it starts off, we all know the gasoline is a fuel that provides power in cars, engines. But along the way, the combustion chamber, the gasoline provides additional benefit of serving as a solvent that cleans intake port and intake valve. So at least, at least you stay away and carbureted and port injected engines. Port injection is a really critical part here. But modern fuel sipping and engines employ direct fuel that shoots the gasoline straight into the combustion chamber rather than spraying an intake valve. So looking at this, if you look at a photo, right? So we have this injector that sprays right into the chamber. And so we have inlet valve, exhaust valve for uh, air and exhaust, the spark plug, we have the fire and the combustion and direct injection going right through there. And so what I'm talking about in this is we're looking at is not, there used to be something called a port injection, which I don't know if I have a photo of. Uh, port injection would shoot on there as well. Actually, I do have a photo of it it's right here. So port injection is up here. So it's on top of the valves. And so as that sprays down on top of the valve, it cleans up any carbon buildup on top of that intake valve. Direct injection goes in the cylinder. Then you have what's called the dual injection, which is like the holy grail for a lot of people in preventing carbon buildup. You have direct injection in the chamber, and you have port injection that shoots down and cleans the intake valves here, okay? So what Babbling is saying here is because we don't have, uh, not every brand is doing port and direct injection, some brands are, you're going to get some carbon buildup on those intake valves, which are going to lead to diminished performance, could lead to engine failure, you're not really taking care of it. And so there's a lot of issues going on with those, with those intake valves when they get built up. And here's a good, good gruesome photo of how bad it looks. And so this is interesting. So what's interesting about direct injection and the carbon buildup is two factors. We have gasoline that is a culprit and we have oil, which is a culprit. So no matter how good the engine may be, a tiny bit of oil still makes its way past or runs on those intake valve stems. So you can have a little bit of gas, a little bit of oil, okay? It's likely you'll see a small amount of oil running down the sides of the valve. Without gasoline cleaning, washing them clean, the oil can break into the valve and accumulate into carbon buildup. So gasoline, as we know, is a very um, combustious uh, energy source, right? Combustion fuel. And as it burns, it will clean things. If you don't know this, just pour gasoline on, a, on an oil stain with some, uh, uh, what, do I, uh, what do I say, some uh, dog, uh, kitty litter, and it'll soak right up. It's pretty crazy. Naturally, oil isn't partially just intake valves. It also runs down in exhaust valves, but in small amounts. The heat of the exhaust valves exiting the combustion chamber burns the exhaust valves clean. So we have the intake valve. And what this we're talking about here is, is basically oil blow-by, which is a very common thing. And it says, however, on the cooler intake valve, carbon can build up so much that it interferes with the airflow through the intake port and even enough to prevent the intake valve from sealing properly when it closes. So direct injection is a fairly new technology. Some vehicles are more prone to intake valve carbon build than others. And looking at the rest of this article, so you're looking at stuff where it's like the deposit can break off, fall in the cylinder, jam the piston strings. You're talking about lots of problems when you don't do this, right? So when you look at the uh, article, it says, want, we just want to make people aware of the problem. It's not something you should take lightly because it could cause catastrophic failure. So I'm nervous. You're nervous. Reading this is like, holy cow, what am I going to do with this? This is crazy. And then that really interesting part here says, uh, on the bottom, is how do you how do you get this? How do you fix this? It says some gasoline companies and car manufacturers point the use of higher quality gasoline with good detergents to help prevent carbon buildups. That's true, right? We've seen uh, gasoline improve over the years, tier one gasoline. While gasoline can keep fuel injection systems clean, there's not much you can do about carbon buildup because, again, we have the oil blow by. So uh, we're looking at how to fix the oil blow by and how to get all the gasoline to fire completely and to be antonomized completely. So there's no gasoline in the chamber. Cleaning injectors, that's good, but there's nowhere near the intake valve, so it's addressing a problem, but not the intake valve problem. So if we look at this, intake valve goes up, 
with this some carbon built upon it, either through oil or excess gas, and that's going to build up. But because we don't have port injection cleaning that valve clean, and because we're autonomizing here in a cylinder going out the exhaust valve, we're still going to get built up on the intake valve there. And so that's going to be, that's a huge issue, right? So what, how do we fix that? And so it's interesting, there's, there's a couple of solutions here. And what's interesting that Valvoline points out, well, help with this issue is Valvoline's modern engine full synthetic. Here is the pitch. The pitch is this new model, modern engine full synthetic, reduces carbon buildup more than other oils. It's hot there, so the oil has to be able to withstand oxidation, thermal breakdown, and degeneration, the degradation of the oil that can form deposits over time. So they're pitching us that this magnificent oil is going to solve the issue because they've added additives to this oil so that way it, it even though it goes past the intake valve, it doesn't build up. It doesn't build up on the intake valve stems themselves. So Valvoline's modern engine oil is specifically designed to address the problem and take measures to solve. And so while others seem fixated on the ineffective notion of cleaning by the use of special fuel. So it, it, they're like saying, well, hey, you know, if you, who cares about the fuel you're using? You're still getting oil by and you need to fix the oil problem. It doesn't matter the fuel issue, right? So you've got to get the, the oil done. And it's pointing out that the Ford EcoBoost engines offer dual systems of port and direct injection. Toyota does this as well. Other brands somewhat do this. What's weird is some brands do it in different engines. Some brands do it in different things. They don't do like, the consistent thing like you'd imagine like every engine's got to have port injection so that's the pitch is you need to buy this modern oil and you also have a easy gas direct injection it's a chemical mixture at a valvoline oil change place that'll clean those intake valves as well remove any buildup so you don't have any catastrophic issues right so we're really looking at maintenance here right so looking at this when you when you google amazon uh valvoline modern engine se oil we have this, this is the modern oil for new engines 2000 or 2020, 12 and newer. And so this is backwards compatible to older engines. We have a 5W30, they probably have OW30 different uh, uh, types of oil as well. Dexos Gen 2 oil, that's important to know as well. And you can see carbon buildup could be sneaking up on you. So it's the fear factor carbon buildup. So what they're saying here is even though you have a port injection on some of these systems, again, they clean that uh, pipe or the intake valve off. If you use better quality oil, you can also get rid of these intake valves. And then this Dexos D, Generation D, was came out in 2015. So we've had this since 2015. So wh what are we what are we doing? When I talk to when I talk to people, it's like, well, I talk to you know mechanics. I've talked to engineers. I've talked to a variety of people on this channel. Terrence, who messes me quite a bit on this stuff. So looking at this stuff, you, you know, you're thinking that the dual injection with the port should clean all those valves off more cleanly. And that's what people are concerned with. They want to have that valve cleanly. And, but when you look at like the car carry nut, when you look at his channel, you look at people on here as well, talking about what engine causes carbon buildup, they point to the incomplete fuel combustion. There's, there's a, like a weird thing. It's like two different uh, arguments here. One is, you know, gasoline is causing the buildup. Gasoline is getting past the intake valves. It's going to seep through eventually. It builds that up, and then you have a less efficient engine because you have all this carbon buildup on the intake valve, right? But what automakers have been telling me for the last seven, or no, since 2019, 2018, the last four or five years, is that they have increased the spray percent PSI going into the chamber, and that's actually autonomizing the fuel better, and so it's got a complete burn. So if you use a Tier 1 grade fuel, which you can find at gas stations, has a little logo on it, right? You use a high-quality fuel. And you you put it in the combustion system, right, with the, the engine, it'll actually burn all the fuel up in the cylinder. That's what the engineers have told me, right? And looking at car care and different uh, mechanic channels, that's what they're saying. It's like if you have the spark plugs, you're always maintenance a change on time, high quality fuel, you should autonomize that gas. So let's set gas aside because it seems like in the channel in the comments, that's not such a big argument. Gas is it's kind of solved, right? In, in a way, it's that we've improved the PSI, we've studied the issue, we have a better combustion. We're burning more efficiently. We're having less emissions. So we're burning the fuel more efficiently. We still have this oil thing, this oil blow by that comes out in the intake valve, which is normal, right? So now the fear is the oil is going to build up on the intake valve because we don't have a way to clean it because we don't have port that's cleaning off the top of that intake valve. And then you have Valvoline that's saying, oh, we got that one covered. We got it over here. Yep, yep. Go just go buy our fuel, which is a Gen 2 fuel, which I'm or oil which I, I'm pretty sure many manufacturers now, uh, oil companies have Gen 2, 2 fuel or oil. I keep saying fuel oil. So they're saying, hey, we got the oil covered over here. So they're saying, 
our new oil with our new additives won't have the same carbon buildup as if older oils. So we're going to take care of that and reduce the amount of carbon buildup. So good gas maintenance, uh, spark plugs, maybe the gas issue goes away. You have good quality oil, fully synthetic. You have the Gen 2 oils that have less carbon buildup going to be built up in the, in, from their design. That goes away, but you still have the third factor. The third factor comes down to how you treat your vehicle, right? So talking to different mechanics, car care, and that different things, um, just drive it. You, you know, if you're short tripping a lot and you're not letting the engine warm up and you're not letting it get like full temperature, you might have some carbon buildup because the engine works well. Uh, burning off does excess uh, gasoline and oil if it's at running at higher temperatures. I think it's one of the policies that happens with engine manufacturers who design engines is they run at full bore all the time, trying to see what, see what you know, bust where the wear points are, but they don't take into account the person who just drives a mile a day, never warms up, does that for years and years and years. So, you know, it still makes sense, like once a month to go out for that road trip, get 60, 75 miles an hour, drive 20, 30 minutes, get the engine really warming up, burning everything out. Um, it'll really help you, I think, in the long term of this issue that seems to me, again, the more I've talked to engineers, the more I've talked to people, it's becoming less of an issue than it used to be. And there's still going to be people like Terrence and mechanics. Who we're going to see a engine come in that's going to be kaput. And it's going to be because of a carbon buildup issue. That's still going to happen. I, I don't believe that it's been solved. I think it's been rectified to a large degree by gasoline uh, combustion and oil types. But I think we're still seeing it in the comments at times. And it's like most, thing, most things, right? So you get 500,000 F-150s sold last year or, or Ford F-Series sold last year. And you get 100 of those that are bad, right? So it's just percentage-wise something's going to happen. So those are my thoughts. I, this is an ever-evolving uh, um, kind of story. I'm hoping to put nip in the bud. I've been talking about it for years. And it seems like the uh, discussion from the engineers saying the PSI is, is shooting in faster and autonomizing is not the whole issue for you guys. And you guys are really concerned still about carbon buildup on the intake valve side with oil blow, blow by. And the Babylon article kind of feeds that fear. But the Babylon article is certainly saying, and that actual article was written in 2019, is saying use a newer oil and you won't have those issues can't wait to see your comments i know you're coming put them down below also check out the website over here or website down below as well pick up truck talk.com other videos over here i'm doing this i'm not my my, my office over here uh, as always thanks for watching i will see you down the road